All right. You can see the screen now. So let me just scroll down some. If I'm rolling over your artwork, it's no disrespect. I'm just trying to find things that are teachable. Um, things that I remember seeing that, okay, here's a good example um, that I talked about briefly. So we've got, this is drawing number one of the details, I believe. Yeah, and it's okay, you know, but drawing number two is significantly better. But I saw some things on this drawing that kind of held it back from looking, by the way, if I'm choosing your drawing to look at, I'm not picking on you. This is what would happen in a critique. So this is like normal, you know, I'm not picking on you. If we were critiquing in a live class, I'd be talking to you like this about your drawings. So here's the problem with this drawing. It's a lovely drawing. It's much better than the first one. So the assignment is, is well executed, but vertical, 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 vertical. They're all kind of the same. They're all sort of the same shape, same size. And they're all kind of this, even this one is matching this, right? So that creates a bit of confusing space. All right. And then you've got all of these trees stopping right in the same place, which kind of stops your eye dead right there. It doesn't go any further than that. So those are a couple of little things to look for. Um, even though it's a huge improvement, you know, these verticals, now it's okay to do strong verticals if you're doing them as a design thing. But I learned how to use verticals in a design sense from looking at two people, P. Craig Russell and um, Alphonse Mucha. So Justine, I'm, I'm yeah. just curious, if you go back to that one, how else would you introduce like core, like what else would you introduce in that one? Let, you know, like in terms of, are you just thinking more of different size shapes or some more like horizontal or diagonal lines or just kind of curious what else you might do? Yeah, to I wish I had access to some of my drawings on this computer, but this is my new computer. Um, well, first of all, I think around these trees, you know, I could have, you could have put some shrubbery that maybe would have gone behind, you know, and then back here, maybe some, you know, undergrowth and then maybe some layers of growth back here. And then, you know, maybe varying the height of these a little bit. And then maybe in the background, you get some, you know, nice mountain shapes and then some clouds. And then if you're going to go with these verticals, you know, maybe this one should have been significantly thinner and maybe should have bent away from that shape. And, you know, so bending them into, these are all kind of following the same directions. So that's a problem and you've got this as well. So those are things I would have thought about. Um, I might have maybe made a stronger separation between these two shapes, even by perhaps instead of cutting down and then following this line, maybe coming down and then cutting in the other direction. You know, so that it this 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 kind of helps to obscure the depth. I'm assuming this is in front of this, but this confuses that a little bit, right? Okay, so you've got this fallen wall. It's a good opportunity to have some rubble here, some rubble here, some rubble here, creating some extra layers. A little rubble down in the corner, a little rubble around the rabbits. A little rubble going around the rabbits could have circled them a little and framed them in an almost halo if you didn't go too crazy with. So how, does that help? I think that answers your question. Um, yes. There's some, a particular one I wanna look at. Um, I'm gonna try and find it. I'm not zipping through everybody. Okay, here, this isn't the one I had in mind, but let's do this one. Okay, this is a pretty good little drawing and then it gets significantly better down here. But I think the, uh, the student whose name I can't see right now, um, you know, a lot of it's sort of about these mice, but the mice are sort of lost because, you know, they're like, I can't really, is that a mouse there? What's all this crumpled detail here? Is that these, this here is distracting us from the mouse. So in a situation like that, I would have used the fabric to have created a bit of a frame around the mouse. So your eye is drawn to the mouse. And then maybe this fabric coming off the bed leads you to this mouse. So instead of it going this way, which leads your eye away from the mouse, it could have gone a little more towards the mouse. So that your eye goes from mouse to mouse. And then maybe having another mouse in here, maybe maybe right here, and then this, which would lead you to here. So there's a big empty space here. So your eye might not notice this mouse. So you wanna create lines that lead the eye. If the mice are important, you need to tell the viewer that they're important. 
Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, that looks good. Um, okay, so there's a particular one I want to find. So I'm going to, it might have to scroll for a few minutes. Um, I love that. I mean, this is real kind of Flintstones looking. And that's not an insult because I have the complete Flintstones on DVD. So don't get me wrong. But um, you know, if I were going to do this, I would have looked at the Flintstones or I would have looked at Planet of the Apes, which has these sort of ruins that have fallen apart. Or I might have looked at old cave, you know, homes of the troglodytes, which you can find, you know, things like that. OK, here's a good tangent issue right here. Boom. And then this, you know, this line is eerily close to where our eye would think this line on this shape would be because we've established this, we've established this and this, we've established this width, we've established this width, we've established this width, and the eye tells me this should end here, but this shape comes. Then we've got this line coming right into this line and meeting in these all three points. So you're, you've really obscured your depth here. So one way to have done that would have been to have moved this one over, or perhaps to have drawn this one through and come down through here in such a way that you know we are not expecting to see this one end. So there's your tangent right there. This kind of ruining the effect of that drawing. Um, it takes a minute sometimes for my computer. This is kind of sometimes hard to navigate through. Um, That's a good example, but I, you know, didn't have a lot to say about it. Um, hopefully, I can find this image. Just by the way, I just want to point out, in case not everybody saw it, that was drawing number one, which is, you know, it's it's pretty nice, okay. But oh wait, that doesn't have the um, second drawing with it. Okay, never mind. Um, I'll try and find that. This was a good example of, I think, an artist who was. Um, using a lot of photo reference and was copying too directly. And I encouraged them then to, you know, try something different. And this is what happened. So it was really exciting to see, you know, um, letting go of the, um, the, you know, the strong reference and going with this thing covered in vines, the sign back. It was just really nice to see, you know, a total break in form that way. So I would have complimented that in class for sure. Um, This is Beth Trembley, who I've been working with for a while. Um, she's been a number of saw stuff. So you've got, this was the first drawing. And this was the second one in which Beth felt sort of self-conscious. But it's actually, this is the thing I've been noticing throughout is it's an infinitely more sophisticated drawing, not merely on the layers or detail level, but just as a drawing. Because you've got this wonderful moody background, you've got these terrific shapes, you've got this bold, interesting rendering, you've got this odd placement of everything back here, and then you've got this mist with all these trees. And notice how these verticals and verticals are broken by these curved lines. You know, so it's just amazing how this information um, it, it, that didn't just pick up on the lesson, but picked up on all the great drawings that we've been looking at in the class. So that's one of the side effects of this that have been really lovely to see. Um, the particular one that I wanted to talk about, I'm having a very hard time finding. And I think it belongs to, um, is it Beverly Court? Is that your name? Oh, this is the one, hooray, it's here. Okay, so here is, I wanna talk about tangents for a minute because this is something we talked about you know, a minute ago. And it looks to me like I can't tell whether this is behind the major shape or whether it's falling off the major shape. In this drawing, the first drawing, it looks like it's hanging off the major shape. In the back drawing, it looks like a tangent, which is supposed to be behind the major shape, but it, it's, it's matching too much. So this is an area where the space is unclear. Um, Beverly, what was your intention here? Um, 
I thought I had too much detail in the first one. And when I did the second, and I totally did a, a photo reference copying because I just couldn't do it on my own. So I tried to take out so much detail, which I thought was confusing because I didn't know what I thought was important. And so then I put in the second one because I thought the people drawing people more into the people were important, but because I don't know that much about rendering, I really didn't know how to do the second one very well. Okay, so is this behind or on top of this? Oh, that's on top. Okay, see, so it looks to me like it could be behind because this, this line is leading me here. Yeah, see, I hadn't even thought of those things. So anything that happens there that works is kind of random because I didn't have that even on my mind. Okay, so here's one thing that um, someone taught me a long time ago is if you don't know, how are we going to know? And that yeah. was something Jim Steranko told me looking at my portfolio. Jim asked me a question. I said, I don't know. And Jim said to me, well, if you don't know, how are your viewers going to know? And so right. that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is that um, I would suggest as, um, an ama an ama as a major move forward in your drawing, it's never put a line down unless it's there for a reason, unless it's telling us something. These squiggles down here, which I think are just supposed to add texture, they're not really telling us anything. They just sort of look like random marks. Again, not picking on you. I would do this in a critique in class. We're just not in that format. These lines could have all been used to create, uh, you know, some rippling layers of depth and rubble. You know, little jaggedy kind of going off down this way, and then this one kind of coming down here and almost meeting it, and this one kind of going up. So all of these squiggles here were missed opportunities. You know, this pile of rubble could have gone down a little slope with some more, a little bit of rubble here and there. So never put in anything that isn't telling us something. Um, that's one of the best ways to start improving your art is, you know, don't put in any marks down that aren't describing something. Can you talk a little bit more about like that kind of detail that you were just mentioning and saying, don't put anything without um, it telling something. Can you, I, I'm really trying to learn ways of, okay, I want to show the texture of this pathway, for instance, but I don't want to draw every single pebble. Um, so some things that you might be thinking about telling the viewer with those marks on a texture like that. Okay, so I think that the best way to answer that question would be for me to show you some slides of art in which answer that question. So what I could perhaps do is I could take some notes about anybody's comments and then I could come up with some examples to show you next time. So your question is, um, how do those marks, you're using marks to describe space and texture, right? Is that sort of what you wanna know? Yeah, I think so. Cause I look at this and I can see myself having a similar issue of, okay, I wanna put some lines here cause it's a pathway and it's rough. Um, and I feel like I'm pretty random when I do that a lot of times rather than being judicious with it. And I would love more guidance in, yeah, describing the texture of a pathway without just scattering lines. Tom, I don't have it on my computer. Do you have on your computer somewhere that image I did of the wild turkeys for the... Um... Um, I'm sure I do. Yeah. Do you want me to pull that up? If you can pull it up. Um... I'll look. It'll take me a second to look for it, but... I'll um, look for other things to show you if I can. Okay. Um, While I do that, I'm going to second what Alyssa was saying. Alyssa, I have the exact same experience even, even today. Like those, like how do I, how can I show this is uh, pebbly or whatever? And obviously I'm not going to draw every pebble. Which pebbles do I draw, right? And so I think- Yes. If you can yeah. pull up that turkey, I think I can answer cool. some of those questions for you. Okay. Um, I also may have some cartooning over here that could have examples of that. So while Tom's looking for that, I will look for this. Um, I also may have some of it in my reference that I've been using on these images. Um, um. I mean, worst case scenario, I can go to... Um... Sometimes when doing things by request, you have to expect a bit of a slowdown. Um, see, I, I've started a new, a new project here, and so I don't, have, um, I don't have all my art uploaded on this computer yet. 
but I'm going to try and find examples of what you're talking about. Here we go. This is a start. Um, oh, wait, I know where to find that. Sorry. Oh, wait. Okay. I think I have some on my desktop already, too. Um, Okay, so let's scroll through this. Looking at some of the sketchy Disney stuff is a good way to answer some of those questions. Um, so here, notice that not every floorboard is detailed with texture. Imagine how exhausting this drawing would be to look at if every grain and every stripe of the wood was perfectly detailed. So what the artists have done is, is chosen spaces to put in some details here and there and left other things open. And a lot of that comes about just to a feel, you know, for where those should go. But um, some of it will happen, you know, through not through, see, this is all reference I'm using right now for the job that I'm on. Oh, here's another, here's an example of just that very thing. So you've got this rough walkway here, right? So what this person, what Walt Kelly has done is Walt Kelly has sort of put the details where the ruts are. So you've got these sort of horizontal ruts going this way. And then occasionally just some details to link the two to make the space more clear. Or here, just to create just enough. Notice Walt Kelly didn't roll all these with these lines. Walt Kelly chose four lines. I will usually try to group three or four lines together to describe a texture like that. Instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, is I might group four lines together just like that. Instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Walt Kelly just put in three. So choose your lines that are going to describe form carefully and tastefully by not overdoing them. Now, this could have been covered in lines like this, describing the slope of this road. That's enough. That's all we need. This could have all been textured all through here, but look at what Kelly did. One, two, three, and then one, two, right here. And then these rocks here, kind of curving over to this little pile of rocks here. So it's about selectively choosing where to put them and grouping them together. No, you could have done one here, one here, one here, and it would have looked amateurish. What makes these this, this work is Walt Kelly grouped them in a way that defines everything without just going one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, grouping them together artfully. Same here, Walt could have put a line here, a line over here, and a line in the middle, and it wouldn't have held together. You group things together. I talk about grouping quite a bit in my details class. So there's that again. Notice here that we've got this big rock and then we've got all this little stuff around it. So you've got a big thing to draw your attention here. If there was no texture here, that black spot on that rock would look very out of place. And that black spot on the rock would become a hole in the composition. And it would be very difficult to discriminate what the space is. But since we've got these little details rumbling around the rock, it kind of anchors the rock in a texture. And then it's not isolated. Walt Kelly put a few more here and a little bit here, and then some over here, and then a satellite here all by itself. So you've got this grouping to help anchor that rock to the ground. And then that texture repeated here, that texture repeated here, and a satellite here. If you look at standing stones in Ireland, stone circles, they'll usually have like, you know, whatever a dozen or 16 or eight or 10, whatever, stones in a circle. And then there will, there will be what they call a satellite, which is a stone that's off in the field somewhere that's not connected directly to the standing stone circle. So I often think of groupings and then a satellite, you know, grouping, grouping, grouping a satellite. And I'm also hearing you say that some of the reason that these, like it helps draw our our eye across the page, the way that these details are placed. It helps draw our eye across the page. Um, the fact that Walt Kelly artfully grouped them in this way uh, makes it look very intentional and natural to the eye. Because when you look over things, 
your eye doesn't see every blade of grass, certain things stick out. One way to answer that question for you is to step out into your lawn, look out over the lawn and notice where your eye catches. Well, why does it catch? What's there that makes your eye catch on that? Or look out over you know, um, a road and look at you know, what catches your eye, look at it and figure out why does your eye catch there? Mm. Is that helping? Yes, I'm definitely going to now be going through some uh, looking for some more reference to just get get conditioned to looking at this uh, more critically. Walt Kelly's terrific. Walt Kelly did really simple stuff. And then Walt Kelly would do extremely complicated stuff. That's a simple Walt Kelly cartoon. And then Walt Kelly would then turn around and do this. So the, this is like I talked about earlier, Walt Kelly's approach was different just as mine is. Okay, how do you place things? Look what Walt Kelly did. Walt Kelly put a pile of rubble here that leads to this character, and kind of leads over this one's head, and then it winds back here across this character. And then look how this stuff is arranged. It's not all over the place. It goes this way, and then it's echoed this way, and it's echoed this way. So you want your repeating forms to be not perfectly parallel, but they should kind of echo each other a little. So a lot of this is really refined stuff that comes down to feel, and I can give you some minor pointers, but a lot of it is stuff you're gonna to have to learn. Look here, this leads the eye all the way through the drawing and lead you to this character. You can follow the line this way, you can follow the line this way, and then this is echoed here, and then here, one, two, three. One, two, three. Frequently thinking in threes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, threes are very comfortable. Look at this, I'm gonna give you a junk pile exercise later. You know, I think that's in the assignment. Um, what a great panel, look at that. Anyway, um, notice also here, same issue on the fur. Do I render <coughs> every bit of fur? No, you render the bits of fur that are gonna help define the shape. You know, this here, it's really just one, two, three, one grouping of lines, a second grouping of lines, a third grouping of lines, and a fourth grouping of lines. You know, here we've got a grouping, a grouping, a grouping, and then another grouping. And they're, they're not all over the place. The head isn't overwhelmed with, uh, you know, an abundance of drawing. On this, it helps, you know, form the kind of, the fatness of the cheek and jaw. And then it kind of helps create this texture that's rolling, you know, into the, into the um, collar, right? So it's helping define the form, but, Walt didn't choose to pollute the entire character full of those shapes. Um, this is great. You know, this one's even more detailed than the other ones. But look how carefully Walt, where Walt chose to put the lines, not everywhere, but where the darkness is. Notice how luminous this becomes because Walt Kelly didn't cover everything with lines. Walt Kelly put nothing here and then rendered here. And notice how the shadow rendering kind of creates a nice little arc. You know, you've got this nice little circle here, right? Um, so look at Walt Kelly, if you're into cartooning, you can't go wrong with Walt Kelly. Um, I think that that probably more than answers your questions. Anything else? Justine, I sent in the chat window the, the link to the turkey. Um, it's, a, it's a Dropbox link. If you want to click it, you'll see it. I'm pretty sure that's the one you're talking about. And if it's not, I can find another another one. Because somebody was asking in the chat window about um, how elements like shape and tone and size and things cause things to recede. And I know there's elements of that in the turkey drawing. Sorry, what? Is it this one? Uh, oh. Oh, it says I'm just, on the screen. It says just mean here are the turkeys. And then below that, there's a link. It's a Dropbox link. Does it say turkeys? No, it says birds.tiff. Um, I'll okay. send it. Yeah. I got it. Okay, this is one of my drawings. Um, Should be able to zoom in if you want and stuff like that. So, what you've got here is I didn't delineate every bit of rubble in the in the ground. Yeah, yeah. Can you share? Oh, duh. <laughs> 
it's nice. It, it doesn't help much if you can't see it. Okay. All right, so what you have here is, you know, if I look out my window, this is covered in ground cover. But if I render all that ground cover, it's gonna be impossible to read this image. So I chose to just render under the turkey, under the turkeys, and then create this little layer back here. So what I did is I used my rendering to um, help create layers. You know, I rendered where I wanted to create more space. And then instead of having these turkeys floating in nothing, you know, I don't want to just render here and render here and nothing else. So then I put some over here, which damn, this thing is in the way and I can't get it out of there. Okay, here we go. You know, I just put some marks here because you don't, if you just rendered here and here, it's going to just stick out like they're floating in space. So selectively choosing to put some here, which kind of leads into that tail, and then selectively choosing to put a little bit here so that they're not just floating in space. So you've got this, look at the zigzag, zoom, zoom. So you've got this line through, but then you've got a zigzag that leads to the turkeys. And then back here, I created a layer here, but I broke it. Look at how these six lines create a lot of depth. You know, you've got here to here, right? and there's nothing there. What if these lines weren't there? Look how much depth you would lose if this wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to answer your question, but the problem with it is that I can answer it to a point, but ultimately some of this just comes out with the, re with the refined vision you gain through practicing this for a long time. And so, some of these questions are, think about it now, understand it later. This has been super helpful. Thank you. Okay. So that's it. Um, I think we're running out of time for me. Um, I'm hoping to get out in the sun while, you know, I haven't had a walk in a while. Any other questions though, before we go? Um, I hope that was clear. Here's a problem with answering some of your questions is some of you are wanting me to tell you things that took me years to figure out. And so I can tell it to you, but the truth is, you know, you might have to organically experience it for yourself. Okay. That's definitely true. I mean, speaking as somebody who never drew with any sense of realism and never really tried until much later, I know that there are ways I can think about it, but I really don't think about it well until I try it a couple times and then look at it after I've tried it and then try, and then try it again. And then I sort of get into a rhythm where I, I understand, oh, this works, this doesn't, this works. And it's, it's very slow going because I, I was, not a, um, was not a good student, certainly not of this type of, of, of material. So, um, but, I, but I do know that the, that the practice and the sort of like, uh, the inquiring after the fact, after I do a little bit and sort of this constant sort of give and take between doing and looking is really essential. So you asked that question, I just answered it. You may not fully understand it. So what I would do is I would take the core principles that I just taught you about selectively choosing what to render. And I would spend an hour looking for that get it into your head. You know, if you don't really understand it yet, go look at Walt Kelly or go look at whatever and look for examples of what I just said. And that will bring it, instead of it just being something you asked about and I answered the best I could, but you really still don't fully understand it. If you go seeking it, um, it the secrets will start to reveal themselves. Once you're told something, it's not enough to know it with your mind you have to pursue it, you have to seek it, you have to practice it. Because knowing something with the mind is almost as worthless as not knowing it at all. <laughs> and, and that's another actually key tenet of Hinduism and Vedanta is, you know, you don't wanna just be told there is a God, you wanna pursue experience of that firsthand. You know, the, you don't wanna have blind faith in anything that I'm saying, and in a spiritual context, I found blind faith didn't help me at all. 
you know? So it all applies, whether it's about drawing or spirituality or music or whatever, those patterns that I talked about, those repeating patterns, selecting when to put things. I mean, this is why George Harrison is such a masterful guitar player. His solos would happen and he wouldn't just jam as many notes into them as he could, he would leave spaces and punctuate things. It was all very tasteful. Like Walt Kelly would put those little few marks. You know, it's about thinking about where to put the marks, thinking about where to put the notes. It's easy to just go, you know, any, any monkey can be trained to do scales fast. <laughs> but to learn how to punctuate tastefully a few things here and there, that's where the juice is. So, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna understand better the answer to your question, as soon as this conversation's over, go look for it. Did I answer your question? I know I want to. So if you're talking to me, I'm I'm thrilled with this whole conversation. I'm very excited about looking more for this. So you've you've certainly given me a direction to um, pursue as far as more knowledge. Okay, great. Um, and anything Justine, I I assume copying drawings is a great idea too, right? Like if you want to learn how what well, Kelly thought, copy or even trace, you know. Here's three things you can do. First of all, trace it. Second of all, copy it so you really know it. And then thirdly, do it yourself without copying it, but using those principles. So you trace what Walt Kelly did there. You copy what Walt Kelly did there. Then you create your own dirt road using those principles and moving all those same ideas around so that it's now your own. Yeah. So that's really the best way is if you wanna understand it, get to know it intimately. Because just copying it or tracing it isn't going to teach you how to do it. It just teaches you how to imitate something. But if you do the copying and tracing, then you do move it around, bend it to your will, then it starts to internalize as something that's yours. I think maybe one thing I want to definitely get in before we, we hang up is that um, any of you who feel like you're not progressing, like you're not really, you know, understanding it. It's not really showing up on the page. I studied stuff sometimes for years before it showed up on the page. So the information will be in your head, it'll be in your notes, but it takes a long time for it to internalize. I use this word a lot, internalize. You can internalize this through practice. Once you've internalized it, it's yours and it will come out of you. But if you just go, oh, I know that now because I watched the lecture, you've done nothing. You have to internalize it. If you don't internalize it, it's not yours. It's not going to come out. It's just an idea in your damn head. And there's really almost nothing more worthless than a thought in your fucking head. <laughs> in some of our heads, yeah. I've laid a lot on you. I hope you're not exhausted. Um, this is great, Justine. I really appreciate it. And I think, I think others do too. I'm seeing the chat window, some people saying that. Um, so, so maybe we'll end it here. I think for, um, for the people who have missed it, I think we always post the, um, these videos, you know, the recordings, but I think I'll isolate the, the critique portion of it and, and put that somewhere so some of the people who missed it can see it. Cause I think it'll be really beneficial and including the Walt Kelly stuff and, and the turkeys and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so, Justine, if you need a walk that bad, go take a walk. Yeah, I'm gonna go take a long hike. Um, everybody, okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, thanks everybody. I'm gonna sign thanks. off too, cause, cause I've been abandoning my daughter far too frequently and she's, <laughs> she's a real wreck lately as we all are. Um, so I'll sign off. I know you. Uh, some of you will be on the call with Emma tonight. Tell her I said hi and um, well, I'll talk. Justine, I'll talk to you soon too. Okay. You know, I'm gonna put thanks. in the chat, I'm gonna do one thing before we all go is I'm going to uh, right now go in and enter in the chat a place for you to put in follow-up questions because you're going to walk away from this and go, oh, I don't understand that. I misunderstood that. I wanted to ask this that didn't. So I want to give you a place to do that. Yeah, how about in the, in the network, right? In the network, I mean, yeah. I'm going to yeah, do that. Do it so That'll be great. You won't have to have regrets. Oh, I didn't understand that. I didn't, you know, I wish I could have asked this question. So I'm going to give you a second chance by going in now and putting that in there, okay? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.